Welcome back, YouTube world. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. My name is Charles, and I'm going to be going along with you on this video today. Now, on this video today, what we're going to be talking about is, and actually before we get going on that, please hit that like button, hit that share button, click subscribe, and click that little bell so you get notified when I do one of my videos that I am dedicated to bring to you and bring you the best information that I can bring you. All right, so today is, we're gonna talk about our food grade buckets. Now, I have talked about the food grade buckets in one of my past videos, I'll put a link up here, and how you do your Marlar bags, I'll put a link up there also. And uh, what, what you're gonna to have to do with this, with what I've come up with, what I wanna do, is you're gonna to have to, um, in my one of my videos I talked about using a, the half a gallon this is a gallon bag um, but I think if we switch to the the half a gallon to do this type of thing um, we can kind of maybe make this work so what I would what I am putting forward to do here is uh, we can take our, our our buckets and instead of just filling them full of all our dry goods and stuff there's no reason why we can't take and incorporate um, our total meals and put them into this one bucket so we can cover breakfast lunch and dinner and maybe even a snack or two um, <clears throat> so on that note what you could do is is say you have uh, your um, you put in your mylar bags your uh, dried potatoes and um, uh, your potato flakes I should say and so you could take and you could do up some spam you could do a ham uh, your veggies, you know, there's all kinds of vegetables out there, whatever you like, from green beans, corn, uh, asparagus, peas, you know, you name it, it's out of the artichokes, whatever you like, you know, but you could get that and you put your cans and stuff into the bottom of the, the container, and then once you get your cans in that you're going to need for your meals, like for breakfast, you could do your pancake mix, and you could do some corned beef hash. They do sell this in smaller cans. This is a little large can, but they do sell it in smaller cans, about the size of the can of the Chef Boyardee. And you could have your pancakes and corned beef hash, or you could fry up some ham. You can also buy uh, uh, something I would suggest putting in there is maybe a little bit of maple syrup. You can buy the small, it has to be 100% pure maple syrup. You can't buy Aunt Jemima, Mrs. Butterworth, none of that. None of that crap's going to work because there's too many preservatives in it. So you want to get a small thing of the maple syrup and put it in there because even if you did had some oatmeal in there or something, you could have a little maple syrup, um, brown sugar. Uh, you could have a small bag of that in there also. Um, they do make the Marlar bags even smaller. Um, I have a lot of spices in the real small little individual bags. Um but you could take brown sugar and put it inside one of those bags and then throw it into here too if you wanted to conserve even more space. <coughs> Excuse me. I would also suggest when you're doing your buckets and stuff, I would grab a few of these Mountain House freeze-dried foods. Now these things are good for 30 years. Um, they're really good. Uh, this is biscuits and gravy. Their top selling one is their beef stroganoff. This is what they're known for. The beef stroganoff is their number one selling product. Um, and, you know, if you could put those in there, um, these, what you could do with these is, you know, because you could get these at Walmart for $8.98. That's what I paid for them. Okay, I bought them right from Walmart. I got three of them. They're $8.98 a piece. Uh, Amazon does sell some of them on the, uh, you can buy them single. A lot of them on Amazon, you have to buy like a three or four day supply and then it goes up from there. They have these buckets that are full, you know, uh, could be a um, anywhere from uh, four days to eight days. It all depends on what size bucket you want to get. But you have to be really careful on that one and want to make sure that, you know, you look at what you're getting and compare it to what you can get. And because sometimes the buckets are a little bit more expensive. So what I would suggest on that one is, is a little trick that I do, which, you know, a lot of people use Amazon a lot, they probably already know, but for you people out there that don't, I'm gonna tell you how to do it. You go on Amazon and you sit there and you pick out a product, any product you want, all right? So we're gonna use the Mountain House, okay? 
So I go on there and I find this, all right? I really want this product, you know? So you, you add it to your cart and then you click save to later, all right? So it drops it down into a cart below that and that is your save to later cart. But you get notified every time if the price decreases or increases. Now, if the price increases on anything that you put into your cart, no matter what it is, obviously you do not want to buy it. But if the price decreases, you get this little notification, you know, either way. But if the price goes down, you get this notification and you get all excited because you're like, hey, the price dropped and I'm going to get myself a deal. And you go in there and you click on it and it went down three cents. Thanks, Amazon. I got all excited for three pennies. But then you do get these other times where I've had it and you go in and you click on it and it dropped 20 bucks. And you're like, boop, send that bad boy to me. So on that note, you know, that's just one way of you know, trying to save yourself some money. You know, probably a lot of people out there already know how to do that, but maybe there are people out there that don't, you know. Um, I do know people that don't use Amazon that much, you know, because they don't want to pay for uh, the Prime membership and everything. Um, but with the Prime membership, you know what, you get free shipping. And nowadays with shipping, and I know, uh, you order something three or four times and you already paid for it. So it's all what you want to do. It's your choice. So back to what I was talking about. So I would go on Amazon. <clears throat> I have to anyways, because I need to get uh, the half gallons because I ran out of that doing one of my other videos that I post up here when I showed everybody how to use your Marlar bags to pack everything with an iron and a piece of wood instead of buying a Mylar bag sealer that's going to cost you probably 40 to 80 bucks. Um, you can also use a hair straightener. Um, uh, those work uh, quite well. Um, I prefer the iron. It just works great for me. And um, so you would take and you start loading your buckets up, you know. And yes, they're going to be a little weighty. But the reason I think that this would be good is because I also I fall back on to why I believe that everybody in the house should have an emergency backpack packed and ready to go an emergency type situation of evacuation or whatever you have to leave and you have to go now. So if you can grab your backpack, you could grab these, you throw these in your truck, your car, your trunk, wherever you can put them, strap them to the top, have grandma hold it going down the road, whatever you have to do, you know, you want to make sure you got the food. Clothes you can wash in a stream somewhere and put them back on, you know, but you need food. So if you store, like I had talked about in one of my videos, you know, you store your food, you say you put it up above your cabinet, above your, your stove or your refrigerator, and, you know, you don't have time to get to that kind of stuff. So that's why I think, you know, putting things into your Marlar bet, into your buckets, and you have all your meals in there all ready to go would be a great idea because it's a grab and go type situation. I'm big on the grab and go because sometimes time is of the essence so if you can grab and go and get out of wherever it is you're you have to get out of um the more time you can save could be the difference between life and death just remember that so on that note <clears throat> you can take you know and say you don't even have the marlar bags all right say you don't have the money to do this right now but you want to do this right with the buckets all right there's no reason why you can't. There's no reason why you can't go down because you can go into the store like these and you can buy sliced potatoes, you can buy whole potatoes. They're already cooked. They're good to go. They're in cans. You know, you can pick up a ham. So now you got you got potatoes, you got ham, you got veggies, you know, you're good to go. You could throw um, um what is it? Minute Maid makes the 10 minute rice, you know, if you have some way to cook, you know. <music>
So I would suggest that you have Chef Boyardee, and I would also, I would throw in macaroni and cheese. I mean, who doesn't like macaroni and cheese? Especially Kraft macaroni and cheese. That's something I want to put up in some Mylar bags, but I have to get more of the smaller ones. You know, <clears throat> just comfort food. If it's a diet, if it's an emergency situation and all hell is broke or loose, then guess what? You know, your kids are really, it's going to make your kid feel really good to have that little taste of home, you know? Um, even if you could pack in, say, throw in some cookies or something, you know? Um, but this way here, the whole point of this is so it's a grab and go situation. I'm a big grab and go fan, like I just said, you know? So if you can get, even if you don't have Marlar bags and you can get your supplies in here, you know, <clears throat> corned beef hash is really good. Um, yeah, it's not good for you if you eat it all the time, but in an emergency situation, I mean, it's got everything in it you need. You know, you got canned chicken, you got canned tuna, you mean, you could do roast beef, pulled pork, you got ham, you got spam. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's out there. If you like sardines, there's canned sardines, uh, whatever, you know, it's all into what your family will like and what they're going to eat. And then you can get it into this bucket. Seal this bucket up, write what up, you know, get you a, a magic marker um, and write on top of it the date you packed it, what's in it, you know, and I would also, if you're going to do canned goods and put your canned goods and stuff in the bottom of it, you know, write the expiration date, you know, so you got plenty of room on here to write. If you're not writing it, if you have to, use the side of the bucket, you know, uh, it doesn't hurt. I mean, this is an emergency situation. Who cares what's on the side of the bucket? You know, write it right on the side of the bucket. You know, this way you know, okay, well, I packed it on this date. The, the canned goods are going to be good for X amount of time. You know, and when you buy your canned goods, as I said in another video that I've done, you know, always buy cans that are non-denon, um, no rust on either end. Make sure you check your cans, check your dates, because some stores lack on pulling this stuff off the shelf. So... You know, check your dates, only buy your canned goods from a, a good um, uh, grocery chain or whatever else. Don't go to a scratch and dent store or something like that because there's a reason it's called basically a scratch and dent store. And we don't want that kind of product for long term storage. For if you're going to eat it right now, that's fine and dandy. You can do that. I mean, I've had to do it before in my life. But for long term storage, you want a clean can. And when you're storing them in there, for one, it keeps it airtight. For two, it keeps it um, all the moisture and dirt away from the can. So it helps prevent the rust from forming on either end of the can. And I mean, it's a grab and go situation. I would also make sure that you throw some of these in there. Reason being is, so say you have enough food for your family. Say you're going someplace or you're heading someplace and you have to pick up uh, Cousin Johnny or Uncle Billy or whoever, you know, <clears throat> you got a phone call after you left the house. Well, you know you have this much food for your family. But if you had a couple of these that's, you know, just laying on top in there, well, now you got something that Cousin Billy can eat. And if Cousin Billy doesn't like it, then... As it was in my family, yeah, that's what's for dinner. You either eat it or go hungry. And when you get hungry, you will eat anything, even spam. A lot of people don't like spam. I mean, personally, I wouldn't eat it cold right out of the can, but if I had to, I would. I like mine cooked, you know? Um, but, you know, you do what you have to in an emergency situation. All right, so that covers all that. I just wanted to bring that out to everybody. I think it'd be a great thing. I like the grab and grow situation. So, you know, if you if your backpack's all set up, which I'm gonna be doing a video on soon, um, on how, showing you how to get your backpack uh, ready for an emergency type situation, things that you may wanna have in it and everything else. This is different than like your, your hiking pack, your camping pack and you know, I have all those kind of packs, you know, I want to show you how to do a emergency backpack that stays in the house and is only used for an emergency type situation. Uh, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for the Beginners. If you would, please hit that like button, hit that share button, click the subscribe button, 
And once again, I thank you for everything that you've done for my channel, for all the likes, for all the watches. And if anybody's got any comments or anything, please put those in the comments below and I would gladly respond to you. Uh, maybe we can get a little uh, dialogue going here. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.